Good morning, Mount Moriah. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please stand to your feet as you are able as we recite the mission and vision of our church. The mission of Mount Moriah Baptist Church is to lead souls to Christ, to demonstrate the standard of Christian living, and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. The purpose of Mount Moriah Baptist Church is to glorify God by being fruitful disciple makers of Jesus Christ. The spiritual target of Mount Moriah Baptist Church is the unchurched, the uncommitted, the unevangelized, and the unreached. You may be seated wherever you are. The post plan is a crucial measure of the heart rate. Tracking its changes helps monitor a person's health. So it is with our post plan that we hope to measure the efforts and the health of our church and community through five strategic goals. The month of April, we are focusing on stewardship, finance, and development as we provide the financial resources necessary to achieve the 90-10 level of giving. May we center our hearts. Stay with Christ, and Christ will stay with you. Listen for God, and God will speak. Seek the Spirit, and the Spirit will be revealed. For the Spirit is already everywhere, inviting us to stay. Let us pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you. Holy Spirit, we ask you come into our worship, God. Lord God, we ask that you meet the people wherever they may be this morning, God. And may you get the honor and glory out of this time together. We praise you this morning, oh God. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit coming into our hearts and minds this morning. We pray all these things in your mighty son Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yes. Glory to God, everybody. Good morning and happy Sunday to you. Come on and rise to your feet wherever you are and let us sing together. We'll understand it better by, by a word of encouragement for ourselves. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests of succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mists have rolled away, and we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by. When the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathering home, we will tell the story how we overcome. For we'll understand it better by and by. Woo. We are often destitute of the things that life demands. One of food and one of shelter, thirsty hills and barren lands. We are trusting in the Lord and according to his word. He will understand it better by and by. Oh, by. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathering home, we will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Hey. Dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But he guides us with his eye, and we'll follow till we die. Uh, we'll understand it better by and by. 
Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, we will all the saints of God are gathering home. For we'll tell the story how we've overcome. For we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, temptations, hidden snares often take us unaware. All our hearts are made to bleed for some thoughtless word or deed. And we'll wonder why the test when we try to do our best. But we'll understand it better by and by. Come on, wherever you are, sing it out. Oh, by and by, when the morning. Yes, sir. All the saints of God are gathering home. We will tell the story how we've overcome. For we'll understand it better by and by. It's coming. We will understand it better by and by. If you know that you are a lover of Christ, wherever you are, just lift your hand in your chair, at the computer, wherever, and just say, God, I love you. And we just serenade him, just simply acknowledging his presence. Come on, open up your mouth wherever you are, wherever you may be, in your house, in your car. I just want you to take a moment to just simply say, God, I love you. God, I appreciate you because of who you are. Come on, open up your mouth. It's okay where you are. Let him hear you. In this moment, I love you, Lord, and I live my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Can you just sing that to the Lord? I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Oh, come on, let's sing it one more time before we move on. Come on, say, I love you, Lord. Oh, yeah. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Come on, wherever you are, tell God thank you. Wherever you are, tell God thank you. Bless his name right where you are because he's a good God that lets you rise up this morning. Come on, open up your mouth and tell God thank you wherever you are. Give God glory. He's a good God and we bless his holy name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, we bless him on today. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, family. Happy Sunday morning to you. Let us look to the Lord for just a moment of prayer. Lord, we come and we say thank you this morning. You woke me up, dear Lord, and that in itself was a blessing. 
but you provided me with a few challenges this morning, dear Lord. And getting here, I thought, well, getting here was a problem, but you got me here. You know, I woke up this morning, got in the shower, and had to wrestle with the shower door. Came down the highway, and just to find that 210 is all torn up. Get close to the church to find that the exit is closed. But I'm here, oh Lord, and I thank you. Had further affirmation, dear Lord, because uh, the first song I heard when I got in the car was, You Know My Name. If you're not familiar with that song, family, you need to listen to it. He not only knows your name, but every hair on your head. So, Father, we, we come this morning, and we want to thank you for whatever circumstance we're in. We thank you, dear Lord. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The life giver, dear Lord, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Thank you, Father, for being just who you are, God and God all by yourself. We lift up the names of our sick and distressed, dear Lord, and those who are otherwise infirmed or have difficulties, dear Lord. And Lord, we ask that you, you let us take this time during this pandemic to get to know one another again, dear Lord. Yeah, we're, we're coined this frame, phrase where we're tired of Zoom meetings and, and the like because we can't reach out and physically touch our neighbor, but we can pick up the telephone. We can call those or, and talk to those that we haven't reached out to in a while, dear Lord. We ask, Father, that those that we are in quarantine with, we take a little extra time. Yeah, we get on one another's nerves. But that too is a blessing, dear Lord. Thankful that you have someone to, to talk to because there are those who don't. Father, we ask that you continue to watch over this edifice as it stands. And thank you, dear Lord, that we're able to have corporate worship even though we can't reach out and touch one another. We can listen, we can see. And Lord, during this time, let us take a little time, a little quiet time, and let you speak to our hearts. We ask this, and we ask, dear Lord, that while you're passing around blessings, dear Lord, don't forget our ministers and our beloved pastor, dear Lord, because he's, he's got a lot on his plate. Even though we're not physically here, he's still working hard. Bless those who are keeping up the property of the church, dear Lord. And bless especially, dear, dear Lord, those who are out here volunteering, those who actually put their lives on the line to serve others. We ask that you keep them safe, dear Lord. Let us all continue to practice safety. These and all needful blessings we ask. In the precious name of Jesus, let us all say amen. amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strange. In the light of his glory and grace. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Wherever you are, we thank God and we praise God for worship on uh, this morning. And we thank God for you worshiping with us wherever you are. You might be in your car in your living room or kitchen or even in your bedroom. We thank you for being in worship on this morning, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. I do encourage you to please 
uh, follow all of the announcements as you have been receiving them through our email system as well as on our Facebook page. Uh, you can uh, drop off your tithes and offerings on today from 9.30 to 11, on tomorrow from 2 to 5 p.m., and on Tuesday from 3 to 6 p.m. I want to thank you for your faithfulness in making sure that you support your church financially. And then, as you have already heard, we have teamed up with Serve Your City, D.C., uh, to continue to provide food and basic supplies to the most vulnerable in our city. And you can see a list of those items needed on our website. Uh, drop off days and times are this morning from 8 to 10, on tomorrow, Monday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., on Tuesday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., and on Wednesdays, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And so we do encourage you to please, uh, to please help us as we help serve your city, D.C. I pray uh, that everyone is well. I pray that your families are well and that you're doing the things that are necessary in order to be safe, wearing your mask, washing hands, uh, social distancing, et cetera, et cetera. And we are praying that the God of grace will allow us to come uh, to the sanctuary real soon when the Lord deems that that time is necessary. We do uh, pray each weekday morning from 6 to 6.15 a.m. We will be in prayer as a congregation on Tuesday at 12 noon. Bible study goes live at 6 p.m. on Tuesday as well. And at 9.30 every Sunday through our Zoom connection, we will be in church school. You should have the link for that. And also that link should be on our website. Please join us uh, for church school this morning at 9.30. And then at noon will be our youth church. So um, please, please uh, support all of these endeavors as we are trying to minister to you and to our community even during this pandemic. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds now for the lifting of our morning offering. The Bible says, will a man rob God? The answer must have been yes, because God says, you have robbed me in the giving of your tithes and offerings. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there might be meat in my house. Test me, try me, prove me, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing in your life that you will not have room enough to receive it. God has been blessing us. God is even blessing us right now. And we worship God with our tithes and offerings on today. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you and we do praise you for this opportunity to give. We ask and pray that on this morning that our gifts will be pleasing in your sight. Bless the gift and the given. Allow them to be used for kingdom building. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Let everybody say amen. Amen. You can pull out your checkbooks now and you can write your uh, tithe check to Mount Moriah Baptist Church. The address is 1636 East Capitol Street, Washington, D.C., Northeast, 2003. 1636 East Capitol Street, Northeast, Washington, D.C., 2003. Or you can give through PayPal. Amen. As we are preparing to give or as we give, you can go through the PayPal account, your personal account, or the account of our church. You can give through PayPal. You can give through Givelify, and you can also give through the Cash App, or you can get your bank to uh, send us a check in the amount that you so choose. You can mail it off. You can drop it off on today, tomorrow from 2 to 5, and Tuesday from 3 to 6. 
Amen. I pray that you are writing your check now or you can use your device now and pay through PayPal, GiveLify, or our Cash App, or you can do bill pay through your bank. Thank you for being so faithful in your giving at this time. I've got this song this morning it says, Thank you for all that you've done thus far. Thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for food on my table. I know that you're able. I want to say thank you. Oh, thank you for all that you've done thus far. Thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for food on my table. I know that you're able. I want to say thank you. That's how it goes. Hey, thank you for all that you've done thus far. Thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for food on my table. I know that you're able. I want to say thank you. Amen. Let us stand for our doxology. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you. This morning I've got a word of encouragement for you. I've sung this song for many a different event, but I thought it would be very fitting for what we are facing today. As you rise every day, there's purpose in your life. So regardless of the fact that you may not be able to go anywhere, God is still moving and working in you. Be encouraged, my family. This too shall pass. In the middle of the turbulence surrounding you these trying times are so hard to endure in the middle of what seems to be your darkest hour hold fast to your heart and be a this too shall pass like every night that's come before it he'll never give you more than you can bear this too shall pass so when the start you be comforted for it's in his hands this too shall pass oh the father knows the tears you've cried before they fall he feels your pain his heart Yours are one. The Father knows that sorrow's heavy chains are strong, but with His strength, 
<laughs> you'll overcome this too shall pass like every night that's come before it he'll never give you more than you can bear this too shall pass so when this thought you be comforted for it's in God's hands this too shall pass so set your eyes set them above the mountain For it's in God's hands, this too shall pass. It's in His hands, this too shall pass. Oh. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Tomlin. Let us, let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this time of worship. And we praise you for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, not only in this sanctuary, but wherever we are at this present moment. We ask and pray that you would prepare our hearts and our minds now for the preaching and the teaching of your word. Help us to hear and help us to put into practice what we hear on this morning. We ask and pray that you would increase our faith through your word on this morning. Come, Holy Spirit, and have thine own way. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Let the people of God say, Amen. Please stand for the reading of God's word wherever you are. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11 from the New International Version. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11 from the New International Version. Version of the Holy Bible reads this way. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self-confident and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated wherever you are. I want to use as a subject this morning the God of grace. 
the God of grace. While in crisis, we so often fail to see God's grace. Even though in pandemic, God's grace is still evident. We see instances of God's grace all around us. Maud Burke was a COVID-19 patient at Fort eBay Putney Hospital in Georgia. She was then a 99-year-old African-American woman. She survived the virus and was discharged after 17 days in the hospital, just in time for her 100th birthday. She was the oldest COVID-19 patient to be discharged. Nurses and staff lined the hallways in joyful applause the day she came home. One staff member said her strength and determination are amazing, and we wish her well as she continues to recover. Thank you for being an inspiration, Miss Maud. Italica Grandana, a 100-year-old Italian, was released 20 days after she was first admitted to the hospital for mild heart failure. She lived through the flu pandemic in 1918, and she has now lived through coronavirus as well. She was nicknamed Highlander the Immortal. Reverend Timothy Cole, the first known case of coronavirus in this area in early March, is now home recovering after spending three weeks in the hospital after presiding over a Sunday worship service on May the 1st. We can come into our church family. Deacon May Francis Frazier was diagnosed with coronavirus and today Thanks be to God, she is recovering at home. ER nurses, a particular nurse in Boston, not only surviving cancer, but also COVID-19. Detroit automakers, Ford and General Motors, are now producing respirators, ventilators, and masks to assist persons affected with COVID-19, as well as healthcare workers on the front lines. Chipotle donating $10,000 worth of meals at MedStar, Maryland. World Kitchen last week donating over 50,000 meals in accumulation to the District of Columbia. John Body was watching the ABC Evening News when he learned the farmers were throwing away milk and other vegetables that could be used to feed America's hungry and being led to co-found Farms to Food Banks, an organization that goes and picks up food that would ordinarily be thrown away and give that food to food banks to feed America's most vulnerable and needy. Despite this present pandemic, God's grace is still sufficient, available, and evident in our lives today. This was apparent to me on Thursday. I needed to pick up some items at Walmart. I was walking into the store and noticed that the line to get into the store was around the corner. I began to complain. I should have come earlier. I should have come later. I should have gone to Costco. It was beginning to rain, and I started complaining about that as well as I stood in line. I stopped right in the middle of my complaining and began to think that things could be so much worse. I could have been unemployed and wondering how I was going to pay for what I needed. I could have been one of thousands in this country diagnosed with the virus. I could be in the hospital. Loved ones as well as those I love and pastor could be in the hospital. I could have been preparing for a funeral. As far as I knew, I was healthy and in my right mind. What was a few moments of what I perceived as an inconvenience? And it was less than 10 minutes that I was in line. It was because of God's grace that at that present moment, it was not me. My complaining turned into joy. In the midst of so much bad news, there is so much good news, so much to be thankful for. Thank God for God's grace towards each and every one of us. A.W. Tozier defined grace as 
the good pleasure of God that inclines God to bestow gifts upon the undeserving. It is used to benefit sinful men, to save us and to make us sit together in heavenly places to demonstrate to the ages the exceeding riches of God's kindness to us in Jesus Christ. If we will look over our lives, we would acknowledge that God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is always available. God's grace is enough. And God's grace is necessary. We don't deserve it. We did not earn it. But for some reason, God provides grace to us every now and then. In our text for preaching today, we have the final words of the writer of 1 Peter. The writer encourages communal relationship with advice on living through times of suffering. The writer has gone through suffering himself. There has also been a range of suffering by Christians in Asia Minor as well as outside of Asia Minor. The writer tells these Christians that their suffering, the situation of those in Asia Minor, must be, has to be a part of God's universal plan of salvation. Maybe those in Asia Minor have heard that Jesus' apostles, Peter and Paul, have been martyred. Or maybe the writer was a hero and the people in Asia Minor knew he was about to be martyred for Christ, even as he penned the advice of this letter. The final instructions touched the reader so much so that they could never brush off what the letter stated. The writer begins this section by telling the younger to submit themselves to the elders. The elders may be those who are leaders of the flock, or they may be the new converts to the congregation. Or the older may be those who are seasoned and aged. And the younger may be those who are younger in age. Then the writer says in verse 5, All of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another. Because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. The writer states that both the elder and the younger must be humble. And this humility must be practiced towards one another. Those who are elders, those who take care of the church, those who are mature in age deserve respect. But so do the flock of the church as well as those who are young. Those who were elders or seasoned saints cannot exalt themselves. They must be humble. And so should those who are younger or new converts to Christianity. It is here that the writer teaches us about the grace of God in the midst of suffering. God's grace is sufficient even while suffering. During this time in our lives, what can you and I be reminded of concerning God? First, you and I can be reminded of the fact that God is a God of comfort. The writer says in verse 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The writer has just told these Christian readers that they must humble themselves before God. And if they do so, God will lift them up in due time. Even humans must be humble before God. God exalts those who are humble. The Christians who were addressed were from the lower ranks of society. They had to produce or practice humility before patrons and other citizens on many occasions. Them being humble persons who would ultimately be exalted surely must have eased the tensions in their daily lives. Yes, this ease, yet this ease tension does not erase the difficulties in their lives. The lives of these Christians continue to be difficult. The writer knows this, therefore, he tells these Christians to throw their anxiety on the Lord. To cast all of their anxieties on the Lord because God cares for them. God exercises in all things universal care over them. God's universal providence was available to them. The writer assures these Christians that their suffering has not escaped God's notice. God cares for them and their situation. God will, in fact, nourish them. The God who humbles them is also the God who comforts them. These Christians humble themselves by casting all of their anxiety upon God. 
The word cast means to throw something upon something else, such as clothes upon an animal for riding. They were to throw their cares upon the Lord. They were to have no anxiety about anything. God was, is like a parent looking out for God's children. They were to entrust their anxiety to God's parental care. God protected and provided for them as would a father. They could free themselves of anxiety because they were under God's care and protection. God cared for the afflictions of all. God would take care of them in the present. God was strong, and God was strong enough to save. God's hand was opposed to whatever had these Christians facing anxiety. Their affliction was weaker than God, but was a real power nonetheless. So if they placed it all in the hands of God, they would be all right simply because God cared for them. They were under God's mighty hand. Anxiety is what all of us are facing here today. In fact, anxiety is what all of us have been facing over the last five weeks. We have been worried. We are concerned. We are uncertain. We are uneased. We are fretful. We are even fearful. Our tensions over the last five weeks have not eased. They have intensified. Life has become more difficult over these five weeks. We are all feeling the tension of this moment of this time. The real deal is that the pandemic adds to the anxiety we face today. We were already dealing with stuff before this pandemic arose. We are now dealing with pre-existing anxiety and the anxiety of this pandemic. But the good news is that there is someone who we can cast all of our burdens upon. We can cast all of our burdens upon the Lord. We can cast all of our burdens and anxieties on the Lord, and the Lord will take care of us. It is in times such as these, we are to place all of our burdens upon the Lord. It is during times such as these that we are to give God all of our worries, all of our concerns, all of our apprehensions, all of our fears, simply because God is the only one who can handle what we are going through. God is the only one who can help us to make sense of what we are going through. God is the only one who has showed us big enough to help us through this thing. God cares for us in ways that no human can. Just as we are ready to be done with sheltering in, staying in place, and staying at home, we should be done with the burdens and cares we now face. We need to give them to God. We need to throw them, pitch them, and toss them to God. Make no compromises with any of your anxieties. Don't try to handle them yourself. Be done with all of them. The shoulders of God are broad. God is saying, give them to me. Place them on my shoulders. Let me have them, every one of them. Do not delay. Give them to me on today. Give them to me now. God is willing to take all your burdens, all your cares, all your troubles, whatever weighs you down. God is willing to take them without delay, without reservation. Nothing is too small and nothing is too big for God in Christ. We have the supreme example that God cares for us. God sent his only son into the world to die for our sins and to be resurrected so that we might have eternal life. God wants them because God cares for you. Doesn't that soothe your soul? God cares for you. God is concerned about you. God deems you important. God wants to take care of you. God wants to provide for you, supply your every need. God wants to look after you to protect you, to keep you, to shield you, to shelter you. God wants to save you from all harm. God wants you to be healthy mentally, physically, and spiritually. Place all your anxiety on the Lord and if you do, the Lord will sustain you, help you, support you, and come to your aid. Glory be to God. Place all your anxieties upon the Lord. Next, you and I are reminded that God is a God of fellowship. The writer says in verse 9, resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same type of suffering. Although Christians were to cast all their anxiety on God, they were to be watchful, they were to be alert, they were to be vigilant of sober mind. Why? 
simply because their adversary, the devil, was prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to eat, someone to devour. The devil's desire was, is, to undermine the righteous. The righteous cannot survive without God's assistance. They were, they were, there were individual attacks against these Christians, the cause of their suffering. The cure for temptation was a solid faith in God. To do this, they were to resist the devil. They were to stand firm in their faith. And they were not alone. Those Christians who were reading this letter were facing affliction, just as Christ did, but they were not alone in their affliction. Other Christians, just as Christ, were facing affliction also. Christians in both Asia Minor and Rome were living in solidarity. These Christians were to be faithful people in the face of present danger. These Christians in Asia Minor can take comfort in the knowledge that others share the same suffering with them. They could face their suffering together knowing without fear because God supports and strengthens the faithful. The devil, the enemy, is busy in all of our lives. The devil is busy even right now. We have to be alert. We have to be sober. We have to stay awake. We have to be self-controlled. We have to be clear-headed and attentive to what's going on. Even though we know we are sustained by God, we also have a common, formidable enemy. All of us as Christians go through suffering. Our suffering as Christians is because of our allegiance to Christ. We suffer because we are fulfilling our religious duty. We share in Christ's sufferings with brothers and sisters, not only in Mount Moriah, but Christians around the world. The good news on this morning is that we are not alone. We have some teammates. We have some co-sufferers in Jesus Christ. We have some Christian soldiers on the battlefield with us. Others in the struggle with us, others who are suffering like us, others who are in the same struggle as we, others who are sheltering in like us. We are not alone. Thank God for Zoom and Facebook Live and other modes of communication, as Deacon Holloway said, that keep us connected in times such as these. It is through these modes that we can support one another, strengthen one another, comfort one another, and be in solidarity with one another. I thank God that we are not going through this alone. We have Christ Jesus, but we also have one another. Glory be to God. Finally, you and I, can be reminded on today that God is a God of grace. This is the point that I wanted to get to. The writer now gives the benediction to this letter. These are also words of comfort. He says in verses 10 and 11, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast to him be the power forever and ever amen the god of the church in asia minor is a god of grace their god is one who will supply grace to fit every need these christians have been called a baptism to god's eternal glory in christ thus suggesting that god's grace was made available in the life death burial and resurrection of jesus christ Yes, they will have to suffer, but this suffering will only last for a while. It will only last for a little while. The God of grace will restore them. In other words, the God of grace will perfect them. The word perfect is the word for mending holes in nets or resetting a broken bone. When the holes in the net are mended, there is no longer a defect in the net. When a broken bone is reset, there is no longer a defect in the bone. The net is restored and the bone is restored as well. The grace of God will restore them. But the grace of God will not only restore them, but the grace of God will make them strong, firm, and steadfast. The grace of God will also settle them. Nothing will be able to make them stumble. They will be strengthened to the point where they will be able to overcome every hostile power. That's good news on today. Isn't it good news to know that your suffering is only for a short while? That trouble don't last always. 
Doesn't it make you feel good to know that your present suffering is not in vain? Isn't it good news to know that the God we serve is a God of grace? There is no doubt about it. I'm almost through. God's grace still abounds. God's grace, the generous favor of God. God's grace shown in various ways. Grace has been with us since baptism unto now. Grace, a possession of every Christian. Grace, that which saves us. Grace, that which calls us. Grace, that which has chosen us. Grace, that which enables us to share the glory of God in Christ. Grace, that which is with us right now. Grace, that which keeps us and strengthens us and protects us. Grace, we don't deserve it. We did not earn it. We shouldn't be recipients of it, but God gives it to us anyhow. God is a God of all grace, not some grace, but all grace. Not a little grace, but all grace. Not grace sometimes and then not at other times, but God is a God of grace at all times. God's grace is in this place right now. Even during this pandemic, we are cared for and we are taken care of and we are protected and we are supported and we are provided for we are now surrounded by the power of God that's nothing but the grace of God but the grace of God does not stop here notice the manifestations of God's grace restoration strength firmness and steadfastness the reason for the grace of God during the storm the pandemic is to make us better after all of this is over after this pandemic which will last only for a little while you will be better God will use this pandemic to make you whole to make you complete to give you peace to reinforce your life to fix you firmly to establish you God is using this pandemic to hold you up to reinforce you to confirm you to strengthen you to to repair you to rebuild you to renew you God is using this pandemic to make you stronger more powerful and mightier God is using this pandemic to make you firm stable determined resolute certain resolve God is using this pandemic to make you stand fast firmly trained complete and completely whole God is using this pandemic to fortify you to repair you to mend you to keep you and to make you better than you will than you were before just hold on a little while longer together we will be able to make it through this thing and we will come out for the better in a little while we will be able to say with the songwriter your grace and your mercy brought me through how do I know I know because God God has the power. Christ has the power. The Holy Spirit has the power, not just now, but forever and forever, eternally, without end, repeatedly and continually. God defeated Satan when Jesus got up from the grave. Christ has all power in his hands. To him be the glory forever and forever. We trust Christ to show that power by ending our suffering and making us stronger. As a result of it, we claim the victory now through Christ Jesus. Jesus, our Lord. Amen. It is indeed so. Amen and amen. Let us pray, Lord, we thank you. And we praise you for your grace, your comfort, and your communion. We thank you because we know that even in this pandemic, your grace and your mercy is still with us. We praise you for that on today. And we look forward to that time and wish this present suffering will come to an end. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks that the people of God say amen. Please stand to your feet wherever you are. God's desire for all of us is that we be saved. The Bible says that we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and we believe in our hearts that God has risen from the grave we will be saved. Belief and confession are available to you on today. And just because you might be listening or watching in private does not mean that you cannot accept God in that private space. If you are looking for salvation on today, repeat these words after me. Lord, I'm a sinner and I'm looking for salvation. I come confessing that you are Lord and that you are Savior.
come into my life. Save me and deliver me. Make me anew. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, your sins are forgiven. If you prayed that prayer, you're on this journey called salvation. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we do encourage you to please call our church. Leave a message to let us know that you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Send us an email. Send us a phone number. Also, you can call the church office to let us know that you have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. We want to know about this decision that you have made on today, or you can text 31996. You can text 31996, and you can type newbie, N-E-W-B-I-E, -E, and press send, and a membership discipleship form will come to you. You can fill out that form and send it back to us, and someone will get back to you in the next day or so. That's 31996. Type newbie and press send, and a discipleship membership form will be sent to you. You can fill that out, send it right back to us, and we will get back to you. Again, we want to know about your decision of salvation on today. You can email us, you can call us, or you can text us at 31996 newbie and fill out the membership form. God bless you. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. I cast all my cares upon you. I And any time I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you, 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 you. I will cast all my cares upon you. You Amen. That may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks that the people of God say. Amen. 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 Bless you.